Live. Hi guys, hi everyone. Welcome. My name is Jane Bakers and I'm the UK Director for Slate Hair Education. So, I'm going to do a haircut for you today. I'm just going to, going to quickly show you my section in before we get started. So we've got Monica on the camera. So if we've got any Spanish people in the audience, please don't hesitate to ask her. All right, if you want to come a little bit closer, Mom, I'm just going to do this. Just bring this down. So we lift that up a bit higher, that camera. So what I've done is just done a really nice, simple horseshoe through the top and then just separated the fringe section. So really nice, quite a simple, although very difficult to get symmetrical, quite a simple sectioning pattern for this haircut. Um, now what I wanted to do, the idea behind it, was I wanted to do something with graduation, with layering, and throwing in a little bit of disconnection in there. But I don't want to do anything that's going to give a real aggressive finish. I want something that's still going to be really quite beautiful and look quite connected to the eye. Okay, so I'm just going to start off, get in a nice position. Can you see okay? I'm going to get my first section in for you. So guys, please let us know where you're tuning in from. Let us know what time it is where you are. We're at six o'clock here over in the UK. In quarantine still, in lockdown for another couple of months, we think. So. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off in the centre back. I'm going to take a section that goes slightly slimmer at the top to slightly wider in the bottom, only very slightly. Now the reason I'm working with a vertical section here is because I want to create quite a slim fitted shape to the head. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm actually going to organically, as I work around the head, move from something in graduation into something more layered through this side area. Okay. So I'm going to make sure my section is perfectly clean and perfectly central. It's really important for my first section. Just going to make sure all the hair I'm not working on is nice and combed out the way so I can really focus on my section that I'm working on. Hello from Norwich. Oh, hello. Not We've got too some far. Brits in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm afraid I don't speak any Polish, so I'm sure Sebastian will be able to translate anything afterwards. Okay, so what I want to do now is I just want to create it's quite a long but a graduated shape, okay? And I'm going to cut it much longer than I actually do want it. So I'm just going to round it slightly. So I always much prefer my first section just to leave a little bit more length and then I can come back and take it down where I want it afterwards. Now naturally, being vertical, I will create a much flatter shape. If I was doing horizontal sections, the likelihood is I'd build up too much weight. Because I want something slimmer, we can naturally see that I'm vertical. If you look at the way that I cut the hair in relation to the head, I'll show you in a second how that makes sense. Like I always say about tendencies, humans naturally have tendencies to do things. So if you want to step back for a second, Monica, I'm just Hello gonna... from Poland. From Poland, hello. Hello, we've got the fans. Where are <laughs> in Poland that you're tuning in from? Okay, so what I'm talking about with my vertical, I'm just going to put the head straight for a second. When I'm vertical, look at how my fingers are in relation to the head, where my weight's going to build up, okay? I tend to be more flat. When I'm horizontal, as soon as I turn this around, I tend to be building more weight with my elbow down. I tend to be heavier. Okay, so if you look at relation to the head, as soon as I go into the vertical, naturally I become much flatter. That's why when we tend to work heavier shapes, we're more horizontal. When we tend to work flatter shapes with layering, we tend to be more vertical. Okay, so I'm just assessing now how this is sitting. And for me, I can see this is much too heavy in through here. So I'm going to come down quite a bit flatter. Making 
making sure my hair is nice and wet so I've got good control. Hi from Hong Kong. Hello from Slovenia. What's up from the USA? Hello. Wow. Thank you so much for tuning in. Okay, so I'm just going to go back to this first section and reassess my length. Ireland, Poland, wow. All over. All over. And you can see, although I'm cutting at a graduated angle, shorter in the nape to longer towards the top of the head, I am actually very flat. By flat, I mean I'm not building up too much weight. But what I know is I don't want to take the, the hair in the outline too short. So I'm not going to tuck it in too much into the nape. So all of these things are going through my head when I'm creating this first section. As this first section really is the guide to the rest of my haircut. So guys, if you're just tuning, tuning in, welcome. My name is James Akers. I'm the UK director for Slate Hair Education. And we're going to be doing a little combination haircut for you guys tonight. Combination of graduation and layering. We're going to throw in some disconnection as well. Now, everything I'm doing, I'm doing for a purpose. I'm not doing it just for the sake of adding disconnection to be creative. I'm doing it for a reason, which we'll come to. Okay, guys, please, any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Monica's with me. She'll be able to read the questions out, and I'll answer them as best as I can. If you're watching this back and not live, then please still feel free to ask questions, and I will get back to you in the comments if you'd like to. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm coming slightly more on the diagonal with my section, but I'm not pivoting from that point. So what I'm doing from here is I'm coming from quite a vertical section into a slightly more diagonal, into a diagonal. So I'm pivoting around the head, but I'm not coming from that point. I've actually got a moving section. Let me know if that makes sense. Now, I don't want to be using too much over direction towards the top. A lot of people tuning in from Poland. Wow, well, first of all, I'd just like to say as well, a big thank you to Sebastian and the Curilo Project Academy. Thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute honour to be cutting hair for you guys. I've had some amazing artists already cutting hair. I saw, you know, you've got Johnny and JB and uh, guys from Seiko. It's really awesome. I've watched them all. So thank you so much for inviting me to do this. It really is a pleasure. Now I want to make sure that I've still got some length in this outline through the bottom. So that's why if you see, rather than coming down into it, I'm just that last section, I'm just elevating slightly up, making sure I leave that little bit of weight in the outline. So we can see we've still got some length that we're gonna be able to play around with at the end. Because really with this haircut, I'm building all this internal, but it's really gonna be for the end when, it, when I dry it, and play around with the outlines is when this, this shape's really going to come to life. So I'm going to carry on working slightly more now on the diagonal, moving my section, always working with my sections with a wider tooth of the comb, and grooming the hair away with the small teeth of the comb. I find for me, if I work cleanly and work with clean sections, then my haircuts tend to be much cleaner. As soon as I start to get messy with my haircuts, then my haircuts will not be as accurate. So I think for me, that's a massive important thing that I've really had to discipline myself in doing. Now my body position, okay? I'm just behind my section. The reason being is, as I start to get round to this area, I want to build some weight through the bottom. Now, look, like I said, humans have tendencies, okay? As soon as my body comes around here, naturally I'm going to go round to the head. So if I want to start to use over direction, I bring my body back. Body position is a really, really good assistant in helping you create what you want to create. So guys, please let me know if you've got any questions or anything, or what you guys have been doing. Are you all still in lockdown? Are you over to work now? Please let us know. It's always good to hear what people are, other people around the world are getting up to on their hairdressers. If 
if you are back at work, are you happy to be back at work? Are you super busy? I heard actually on the news that New Zealand have gone back and at one past midnight there were queues outside of the salons. <laughs> so that is... Hello from Thailand. Extra Hi from life. Poland, but in the past I lived in Chester, UK. I love English people and I was a hairdresser there. Oh, amazing. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Kimberly asks, what type of haircut are you doing? Okay, Kimberly, so let me explain to you quickly. What I am doing is I'm doing a combination. Okay, so I call it an abstract because what I'm doing is I'm combining techniques with this underneath. So I'm doing a combination of graduation and layering, and I'm going to be adding some disconnection as well. Now, as you can see, my, my, my shape now, my technique is graduated. So very flat, almost layering, but very flat graduation. Okay, now what I'm going to be doing is, is as I work around, if you see my angle here, have you stepped back a little bit, Mon? You'll be able yeah. to see. You see my angle here, as I start to come around, I'm going to be starting to move into more of a layer through here, so elevating more and more as I get through. But what I find very difficult, one of my nemesises, nemesis, nemesis um, in, in haircutting is balance. I think balance is so difficult. So I'm going to do part on this side, part on the other side, and then I can make sure I have a balance and cross check what I've done before I move forward. That way when I move forward I've got a nice clear mind and I'm happy about what I'm doing. Okay, so I think this is going to be my last section on this side, and I'll tell you why. As you can see, the hairline now is starting to come higher in the head. So where before we were working to the hairline here, now we're working to here. So this is where I'm going to start using just a very small amount of disconnection. I'll show you why. Okay, now I'm elevating through here. Still keep my angle, I'm starting to almost move into that layer now if you can see the roots the roots are coming above the section so you can see i'm almost working into a layer but i'm still keeping to my guideline which is really important now this last little bit of hair through here if you can see i'm going to come and i'm going to let it drop all right now the reason being if i cut this off this last little section here what's going to happen in the hairline is this is going to start to come up Okay, if you look at how the hairline follows up through here, if I carry on the same technique, then the hairline, then the, the, sorry, the perimeter is going to follow that hairline. Now, I want to leave this length that I can play with at the end. So I'm actually going to start leaving some disconnection through this external length. And I'm just going to do it visually. Now, I'm going to work through the other side now exactly the same way. Can you see all right? How's the light? Okay. Good. All right, let us know you can see okay. Let us know you can hear me okay. Okay. So I'm happy with what I'm getting on this side now. I'm happy with what it's looking like. It's what I set out to do. Now remember, there's no right and wrong really in cutting hair, okay? For me what there is, and what we say at Slate is, is we try and give you the tools to be able to create your vision. So I don't know about you, but I have a lot of the time, you know, had ideas in my head throughout my career that I wanted to do and I've had clients and I thought, oh my God, this is going to look amazing on her. And then I've come to do it and it's looked okay, but it's not exactly what I wanted to see. And that became frustrating to me. And that's when I really started to want to get, understand the process and understand cutting hair as opposed to just learning hair cuts. So taste is something really that comes from, from you, you know, it's a little bit of you. So this is going to be my, a little bit of me, so let's, <laughs> let's hope you like it. Okay, so now, the way my fingers are working, I'm working the other way around. When working with graduation, so inside your fingers, what a good way to know if you're going the right way is your thumb should be pointing whichever way you're going around the head. So I'm coming this way, my thumb should be pointing this way. If I'm coming this way, my thumb should be pointing this way, okay? Now, all I have to control now, because I have my guide, is that I have the same amount of over-direction on both sides. 
Um, Seal asks, um, she says, it's hard to see from this angle how you're pulling and cutting each, each section. Are you bringing it back to the first section, middle of the back, or are you matching it to the previous section? So what I'm doing is now, when we're hairdressers, okay, what we like to do is we like to say, oh, okay, let's say we number them two to one, three to two, four to three, or we go two to one, three to one, four to one. But in reality, you know, the amount that we actually get that exact amount, so the exact right um, formula for that is quite rare. So I will say back to the previous, but really it's more of a feel that I just need to build in that weight and length. Now what I'm doing is, so I'm actually not really over directing, so I'm almost on the base through the top, and I'm over directing just back to the previous in the bottom. That way, I'm not going to build up too much weight through here, but I'm going to build up some more length in the outline. Okay, so please let me know if that helps, and let me know if that camera angle is okay for you to see what I'm doing. If it doesn't answer your question, let me know and I'll try and answer it again. <laughs> so I'm just making sure I'm keeping nice and clean as well when I'm working. So when I'm cutting, I'm only cutting up to my knuckle where I have tension. I'm going to keep my sections the same on both sides with the same amount of sections on both sides. And then I can do a little cross check and then I can clean my shape. Now, because I'm working on a vertical plane, okay, with vertical sections, my technique is much easier because I can see my technique. It's right here in front of me, my up and down, yeah? My graduation, I can see that. So I don't need to check that again. I know that's good. What I do need to check is my shape, my horizontal. So I need to check horizontally to make sure that the over direction I'm using has been correct and equal on both sides. Let me know if that makes sense, guys. I'll talk to you a little bit about our terminology and everything at Slay shortly as well. So really working into this nape. I find that this is a real tricky area for people. People really struggle with this bottom area. And a little tip for you, as opposed to trying to get that comb in perfectly, if you actually hold the hair where you want it in your fingers first, and then get the comb in, and get the fingers just to follow the comb, then you'll find that you should get a bit of a better tension in through there. Steph says, love your advice. Thanks, Steph. Any questions? It doesn't have to be about this haircut. Please let me know and that will help. And I'll try and answer as best as I can. So again, moving the hair that I'm not working on out the way. And that gives me a nice clear vision of the section that I am working on. Now, I will use clips today more than I would in the salon. And the reason being is just because I think when you're in an education environment, it's actually very nice to have that cleanliness for you to see what hair you're working on and what you're not. So I'm just going to come and comb this really nice and clean. On a human here, I'd just be using the ear to keep the hair out of the way, but these plastic heads don't seem to hold so well. Brittany says, thank you for talking about the disconnect by the ear. What a learning moment. <laughs> I'm, pleased. I'm pleased. If anyone can take just one thing, you know, at least just one thing from this, it's always nice. But, you know, we should always, always be learning. Never be, never have um, too much ego to think that we can't take from other people, you know. I know that me and Michael, we cut hair together very often and we always learning from each other. And I learn from my students, I learn from you know, all sorts of people. It's nice just to have no ego and just have, be that open book, be a sponge. Making sure that I've got nice even tension in my combing. 
And if you look how my fingers are, my fingers are completely parallel to my section. So really, my sections are the guide to my haircut. Now, Michael always uses this reference, which I really like as well. Michael is the CEO, managing director of um, Slay Education. And he always talks about um, your sections are like a map. And he says that, you know, if you were to get to tattoo, which I'm sure a lot of you do have tattoos, um, you know, normally what they'll do is they'll stencil it first or have something on first and draw over it. And he said, you know, that stencil is the section to the haircut. What we're really doing is, is we're, we're mapping out where we're going to be and where we want to be. So I always find as well, using those small teeth of the comb for grooming the head is a really nice way just to keep everything nice and clean. And guys, please as well, like and share the video if you like what you're seeing. It's a really awesome thing, you know, especially in times like this, it's really tough. You know, if we can get um, maybe some young hairdressers who don't know about these things, just to give a little bit of inspiration or a little bit of help in any way we can. It's always a really beautiful thing. I know personally, when I was, when I was learning and I was an assistant and I really started to understand what I liked, which was, you know, the physics behind cutting hair and precision cutting. Um, I wish I'd dreamt of, of something like, you know, these platforms that these amazing artists like, you know, like, like the guy that I mentioned earlier putting out free education. It's really beautiful. So for us to share it around, I think it's our duty. So normally when I get to this point, I just start to, you know, make sure the head's nice and, and straight now. But I can just start to see my balance visually because normally you can you know you can sort of tell if there's something not quite right please show us the back side of the head for a moment so we can yeah. see what we're getting is we're building this little bit of weight towards the round of the head we're building a little bit of length through here through here but what i'm going to be doing is, is really flattening out this area at the top afterwards so really starting to move into that layer so I think I've got about one more section now through this side, and then I'm going to do my cross check for you, okay? Make sure this is tight, because I've had it before when she pulls down on me, it's very, very distressing. And now this section is where I'm going to start as well to implement my disconnection like I did on the other side. And I'm using my section on the other side as a guide for my balance. Uh, Magdalena asks, what kind of scissors do you like to work with? Um, that's a good question, actually. So, I work with a, a few different ones. For me, personally, I always type, tend to use a, a smaller scissor. So, these are uh, four and a half. These are Nix. You see there, Nick. Really beautiful scissors. These are actually really old, but I love them and can't, can't get rid of them. A good friend of mine. Um, gave them to me about five or six years ago and I've just I've loved them so I use these very regularly but as you can see over here I've got some uh, I've got some wings as well which I really like to use I also um, worked quite a lot with Mizutani scissors which I really really love Mizutani scissors are beautiful as well so I, I like a range I like a range of things but for me it's all about the feeling I'm not really you know too obsessed with um, with the name, I'm more obsessed with do they feel right and are they a good quality. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, as you can see, I've got my lengths left out on either side. And I'm just going to have a quick cross check through here, just to make sure that I'm on the right track. So I'm going to put the head down. Okay, this is going to use gravity to help me with my sections because my head is not going to fall straight down. It's going to come across the head. I'm going to use the elevation that I used when I cut it. 
And I'm just going to clean my shapes. So we can see. As long as there's no big mistake, we're happy. <laughs> Leading up what we've got. Hello from Texas. Hello from Chicago. Hi guys, thank you so much for tuning in. After I finish cross checking this little area, I'm just going to do a really quick recap of what we've done at the back. Now, guys, let me know when you work in the salon, etc., do you tend to cross check your work much or not really? It's an interesting thing to know. Guys, let me let me know how, how you guys feel about cross checking and whether you use it as a tool in your salon or not. Okay, so I'm really happy with how this is sitting now. Once I've finished a section, like a zone like this, what I tend to do is just lift it up and just start to move the hair around and see how it falls to the head. Now, if you can see from this side, we can see this really nice slim shape starting to, starting to take place, which is really what I wanted to create. I didn't want to tuck anything in too much. You know, I didn't want to layer anything. I just want a nice, slim build up of weight. And then these lengths, don't pay attention so much. Don't try and think about these lengths too much because these are going to come off at the end. What I'm doing is I'm wanting to build in enough length, so I'm worried about my internal, I want the length to stay through the perimeter. So I've just started with a section bang in the centre, slightly slimmer towards the top, just slightly wider towards the nape. Worked a flat graduated cutting angle and just started to move around the head, getting slightly more towards the diagonal. Okay, moving slightly more towards the horizontal. Over directing slightly to build more weight through this bottom area. Now, as you can see, I've just started to leave out the hair, completely disconnected, okay, where I start to come up in the hairline. The reason for this is because as the hairline comes up, if I follow through in my shape, what's going to happen is the outline is going to follow the hairline, so it's going to come up. I want the outline to stay down there. I might lift it up later, but I want to be able to choose that, so that's why I'm leaving this out at the moment. Okay. Okay, so most people are saying that they always cross-check. Fantastic. Good news. Now, for me, cross-checking is really important because we're not robots, okay? We're not perfect. And we don't always have someone there to check, check our haircuts. So it's really important that we check our own work. That's how we can progress. That's how our haircuts become better. Okay, now what I'm going to do from this point is I'm going to really start to pivot round now. Let me know if you can see everything, guys, please. I'm just going to remove again the hair I'm not working on. Okay. And if you look now how I'm going to be holding the hair, can you see how at the beginning I was in a graduating okay, technique? Now look how I'm holding the hair, I've moved organically into a layering technique. So I'm elevating the hair above the root, which means I'm flattening more internally and leaving more weight towards the exterior. Um, how much time do you give yourself for a haircut in the salon? Asks Martin. Thank you very much for the question, Martin. Uh, I actually give myself an hour. So I always have an hour per client, including consultation, shampoo, etc. Now, when I am doing things in the salon, of course, I'm much quicker because I'm not explaining it so much to the client. Um, and, you know, I think that it's really nice that we have this time at the moment. We should use it to practice our craft, you know. I think we do get in the habit of, of rushing through things and rushing through haircuts. So sometimes it's really nice just to step back and use the time that we have. Ah, this next section, I'm going to elevate even more and still leave out the hairline. Okay. So I'm still following my internal shape. Okay. But I'm going to have this length through the outline. Let 
me know, guys, if you have any questions. And I'll be happy to answer. And now, because I've left the hair up previously, I will actually have a guide as to how much hair I need to leave out this time. Okay, I'm going to carry on working through. Until we run out of hair. Brittany says that she agrees. I think when working in a salon instead of my suite, they're pushing more and more people and giving us little time to work. Do you agree? Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, I think it's very difficult because I think, you know, as, as hairdressers, we, we do tend to be very creative people. And a lot of us that got into hairdressing wasn't to do, um, you know, long trims and big blow dryers. A lot of us, some of us it was, and that's not a problem, but a lot of us it wasn't. So what we have to remember, I think, is that in all industries, in all creative industries and in artistic industries, people have to do some things that aren't to their best and aren't to perfection to make money. Um, you know, I think... Our haircuts in the salon will be will be of a high level and a good level, but they're probably not the best you can possibly do. And I remember when I was bartering that someone actually said to me, because I was so scared, I was taking, you know, still taking two hours for a haircut, I had my test two weeks later. And I remember uh, one of my teachers said to me, look, this is how it is. You can only do as good as you can do in the time that you got given. And I was like, oh my God. And for some reason that just sort of sat with me really well. And it just made me kind of like breathe and I just felt much more comfortable. I was like, okay, it's not only me. <laughs> so yeah, I think um, that's quite good advice, you know? You can only do what you can do in the time that you have. I think, you know, things like this and this practicing, which is really what we're doing, we're practicing, what I'm doing now is I'm practicing. Is a, is a gift and we can use this to actually speed up our time. Okay, now what I am gonna come and do after I've done the other side is come and slim this top a little bit more to take a bit more weight out, but I'm happy with how this is sitting. Because when I dry this, I'm going to lift this up somewhere to here, but I wanted that length. Now, if I had a knob, let's see where this length is here, you know, that, that outline would have come right up and followed the hairline. So I'm really happy with the, the way that that's left out, and I should have enough weight through there to create something. I don't want anything too graphic, I want it to be strong but soft. And any of you that have seen my work before, I always say this, I really like to create things that have an element of everything. So I try to have no more than really one to two focal points in a haircut. I feel like a haircut should, should kind of be at one, maybe something popping, but it should really be at one. And if I'm doing quite a strong haircut, then I need to add an element of softness. If I'm doing a soft haircut, then I like to add an element of strength. And that's just my kind of the way that I've developed in my style and what I like. Because at the end of the day, it all comes down to taste, doesn't it? Um, my clients, for example, they end up, that their haircuts will change with how my taste is changing. Like, as I start to get into one sort of thing, then I'll find that all my clients end up leaving with this slightly different vibe of, of a haircut. And I think, you know, that's why people end up coming back to you in the end. It's because, you know, you, you're, you're evolving with them. If you become stale, then people will, will move. So again guys, if you look at my angle here, I'm now elevating above my section. So I've now gone in from graduation into a layer. I'm just leaving again at that hairline. I'm following this through all the way to the front. Guys, please. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. 
please like and share the video and if you're watching this back then write a comment in the or a question in the comments and I'll do my best to come back to you and answer all your questions but again I just want to really say thank you to Sebastian and the Trilo Project Academy for inviting me to come and do this live for you guys I've been really excited about it for the last couple of weeks Justina says, I love it. And Maria says, I'm impressed. Thank you so much. Guys, we have um, on, our, on our Facebook page at Slate Hair Education, we do, we do run lives um, fairly regularly. Uh, and they're all saved on there. So I think we've got about 12, 13 on there now. So please, if you want to check out some more of our work, we've got some on dolls, but we've also got the four quarantine. BC, um, we've got some on some really cool models as well, so please go and check those out. It'll be cool to hear your opinion. Is there anyone watching that's, that's been with us before, that's been to our academy in, in Soho in London, let us know, or, have been on, or has had us there internationally around the world? As Slate Hair Education, what we are is we are an international education company. So what we do is we have our home and our base in London, which is right in Soho, so right in the heart of London, in the creative industry hub. And we, um, and we run courses from there every month, whether it's one-to-ones or geometrics or creatives. And what we also do when we're not doing that is we travel, we travel the world and do... Um, do seminars and teach courses and do shows. So it's an amazing, uh, it's an amazing thing really. I feel very, very blessed to be able to do what I love. And I think that's why, you know, us, both me and Michael at Slate are so passionate about, about education is because it's given us that platform. Without education, you know, we wouldn't be able to do that. It's allowed us to be able to travel the world and cut hair. So for us to share that, because we only got it from education, right? that's how anyone learns from, from other people. But as long as you put yourself out there, I think, and you speak to the right people, and a massive thing I think that's really important is you should su surround yourself by the sort of people you aspire to be like, or that inspire you. You know, obviously you want to have your own unique flavour, but people that impress you, people that inspire you, they're the people you should be surrounding yourself with. Martin says, do you agree that we should charge more when we go back with the extra expensive PPE, PPE gear and less guests per day? Um, mm, that's a good question. I think it's a very, I think it's a bit of a, I think everyone's a bit lost at the minute um, with this. I know that some that I work in, they put their uh, prices up very marginally just because it's that time every year we do a slight price increase um, but whether it's right I don't know I don't, I don't know whether you know every I think everyone or a lot of people are suffering um, you know financially and, and, and in many ways from from this situation whether it's right or not I think that's up to you it just depends on on how you feel, what you feel is right. I don't think that there's a right and wrong in that, to be honest. I think that it's more of a, of a personal thing. And obviously, you know, our costs are going up. Obviously, you know, we're losing, we are going to be losing money, but then, you know, we also have to think about our neighbours and, and the people that are, are, are our clients. Because the, the only problem is, is, you know, some people, might see that as a bit of a, you know, a bit of a disrespect, a bit of a kick in the face, and if not everyone's doing it, then you're allowing that person to, you know, maybe explore going to someone else. I still think that with clients, you know, clients are our bread and butter. Clients are who, who really make us money, who give us money. So we need to look after them still. We can't take them for granted, I think. But yeah, I hope that answers your question. I hope that puts my little idea on it. But I, like I said, I think it's all opinion, isn't it, really? I'm just carrying on now towards this front. 
and I'm making sure I'm keeping this elevation, okay, I'm just working up to my knuckle and assessing how much I'm leaving in the outline each time. Uh, Magdalena asks, can you do this haircut on curly hair? Absolutely. Now, I think almost every time I do a haircut or a live video or something, someone will ask me like, if I can do it on different textures. Now, what I think the most important thing is, is that you have to think about what changes, okay? Everything has a consequence, okay? Everything you do will have a consequence. If I lift this here, 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 or here, now I'm just right or wrong, but each one is going to have a different consequence. So if I do this haircut on curly hair, this isn't going to be this length, this is going to be this length, and this isn't going to be this length, it's going to be this length. So as long as we're aware of that, okay, then I think that you can do anything. You just always have to think about your choices of length and how it's going to affect. I think, you know, like I've said in, in my previous lives, and I've I say to, to people all the time, when I try and teach, or when I teach, I, I don't want to teach people haircuts, I want to teach hair cutting. And that's the most important thing. For me, you could do exactly the same section and pattern here, and end up with a completely different finish. Okay, you can do the same technique and end up with a different finish, depending on choice of length, and depending on finger angle. So that's what I think is really, really interesting about tight hair, is we can really toy around and play with these ideas. So I hope that makes sense and answers your question. Now I'm just going to come in and just take a little bit more weight out of this. So I can just see the other side. And I've just been a bit more cautious on this side and left a bit more weight in the outline. So just going to come and take, come back through the same way. And just from there, just a touch more. Each section. Always when I'm doing my second side, I, I prefer to be a little bit more cautious as opposed to taking too much off. You see, just that little touch. Just going to leave me that slight less amount of length through that bottom. And then I'm going to come through and I'm going to elevate the head even more through this top area to slim the round of the head. So I'm, I've never done this exact haircut before. I'm just playing around with some different ideas and different lengths. Because I'm actually going to take this top and leave this quite long and take this fringe down. I'm going to have a quite a cool little fringe on this. So I'm actually quite quite excited to see uh, to see how this this one pans out. So now, what I've got, let's put the head nice and straight for you so you can see. What I've got is, you can see that I've got this shape through here. I've got this internal shape still, but what I have is length. So, as you can see, normally, what would happen is this would start to come up. What I've done is I've left the outline out, so now this length can follow all the way around. So I can now toy around and play around with these different lengths. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over the head and I'm going to start to elevate this hair even more to flatten out this area. So I'm just going to spray this down a touch. I haven't got much too much water spray, so I've got to be careful. I'm actually very lucky. I'm at um, a quarantine. We ended up go visiting a um, Monica, my girlfriend, who is on the camera now, we visited her parents and, um, and then we went into lockdown while we were visiting. So they've had to put up with us and luckily her, her dad has this amazing Pilates studio that we're in now. So we managed to be able to find a little space for us to have hair, which is cool. Okay, so you can see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a guide from the back, okay, elevate, and work this down. And this is really just going to flatten in this length in the round of the head. So it's going to encourage the head to push out. I'm going to repeat 
did the same thing on the other side as well. So guys, let me know if you've got any questions. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let us know where you're from. It's amazing for you to take your time as well to spend watching us cut hair. It's really cool. What I don't want to do now is cut off my length. So I'm going to remove my length as I pick them up and elevate the hair that was in my technique. Um, Anita says, how horizontal? My sections now are very horizontal, perfectly horizontal. So there's no real, it's more, the reason I'm horizontal here is because I want to just pick everything up and take it down. I know the elevation that I need. And because I know the elevation, it's much easier for me to just come along and flatten out this shape. So as I've come through here, I've had to over direct slightly, which has built more length towards this front. So what I want to do is eliminate that weight of the front and flatten that out, okay? So I hope that makes sense. Let me know if that answers your question. Hold that hair down and pick the hair up. It's not in it. So we know that we're getting all of it. Sorry, you are camera when she's feeling a little bit ill. So she's going to have a little sit down. Um, Anita says now horizontal. So, what I've done is, is I've just held the hair down that I've left disconnected and pulled everything else up. And if you see how my fingers are, my fingers are perfectly horizontal. Okay, so starting off with my first section being horizontal, but then any hair after that, if you think about how I left my guide out, I left my length out just by visually removing the outline. So what's important is that my fingers are horizontal here, okay, to the head, removing this weight. So as we work around the first way on a diagonal, over directing, now what we're doing is our fingers are horizontal, okay, elevating high and removing the head. So what I'm doing here is the reason why the section might not be perfect is I just want to hold down the head that's not being affected, okay, the length that's not being affected, and elevate up, and that's the hair I've already cut, and push it down. And what that's going to do is it's going to give a really nice soft layered effect. I'm just going to do exactly the same now on the other side, okay? So I make sure I've got a nice bit of water. Why do we use water when we cut hair? Can anyone answer the question? Let us know if any of you have the answer, or what you think, the reason why we use water when we cut hair, as opposed to just cutting hair dry. So you can see quite clearly visually, These lengths are getting longer towards the front. What I'm going to do is remove them. Sarah says helps the tension, helps keep the tension. Exactly, tension, right? So it helps control what I'm doing. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this up. So I think Monica is going to pass the hat off. So I'm just going to set this up as a, as a tripod. Bear with me one second. She went completely green and looks like she's going to faint, so just bear with me a sec. I'm just going to get a nice stool ready for you guys. And then I will be back to it. So please bear with me. Okay, let's see if I can get this to work.
So, right, sorry about that, but hopefully you can see me. I can't see the comments on the phone at the moment. So at the end, what I'll do, if Monica isn't okay, I'll come over and I'll answer any questions for you, okay? But what I'm doing here now is I'm just elevating that hair right up, making sure that I'm not cutting the length that I've left disconnected. Um, so just the hair I've cut internally, elevating up. And what does that do? What does elevation do? What's going to happen if I lift more, okay? So the more we lift, the more weight we're going to remove. So if we can see, if we imagine that we're building up this head shape through here previously, what I'm doing now is I'm actually coming through and really flattening out that weight just in the front area, but still all connected. So if I turn this doll around now, what we're going to start to see is from this side, we can see we've got this nice build up of weight, okay, a graduated technique. Now, as we turn it round to the front, what we can see is we start to push the hair out now, so we start to remove the weight internally, okay? Now, what I am actually going to do here is I'm just going to start and blow dry in that underneath a little bit. Now, what that's going to do is just going to allow me to be able to see my shape. Now, when I work with disconnection, I do this quite regularly. So, I'm just going to get a brush, but give me one second. Now, because, like I said, we were coming to Monica's parents to visit for a night, for two nights, and we've ended up here for two months now we've been here, I'm using her brother's beard oil as a product because I don't have any products with me. But normally I'd be using something like a heat protector and a smoothing agent. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using a vest brush, just to really move the roots around. And then I'm going to use something with a little bit more tension to smooth through those edges. So, guys, I apologise if you have any questions. I will get back to you towards the end, I promise. So I'm going to use like a little wrap drying technique here. So I'm just going to be moving the hair from side to side from the root, really focusing on that root through there, that bottom area. So getting that bottom area nice and flat in case I want to do any work on it earlier. Monica thinks she might be okay again, but I think we should give her a minute just in case she does pass up. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. It's really lovely and these really horrible times for us all just to share a little bit of knowledge and share a little bit of fun and a little bit about us. You know, I really find, although I like the structure and I like, you know, just having, um, having something real and strong in education, really, when we come here, we should be enjoying ourselves. We should be having fun. That's what it's all about. So, you know, please, please, please like and share the video. And if you do have any questions, I'm I promise you I will get back to you. I'm really just trying to beat out any movement that we've got in the hair here. And these dolls do sit quite wide and quite puffy with the hair. So I'm really just trying to make sure that I try and get rid of a lot of that movement. Because I find the movement is much harder to put back in than it is to take away. So I want to dress something a little bit more editorial avant-garde later on, then I can play around with that. But for me, with the haircut, I want to see what the haircut's doing. So that's why I want to try and get this hair sitting nice and smooth and clean. I'm going to do the same thing through these sides now, before I start to focus on those legs. Now, although this looks a bit strange at the minute because of these crazy lengths we've got going on, we are going to be removing those later. So I think it's just a temporary thing. And for me, because I've had the vision of the haircut before I started, I know how I want this to sort of end up. What do you guys find when you're doing haircuts, especially working more creatively? 
Do you tend to have an idea and adapt it as you're working? Or do you tend to have the idea and stick to it? Or do you just start cutting and see what happens? You know, because I mix, I mix it up. I do do different things. I don't always have a solid plan. And sometimes I'll have an idea and I'll start cutting hair and I'll just change my mind halfway through and start to adapt the haircut. So really focus on getting that nice and flat. Now, the dollies luckily, they don't feel too much pain. So I'm really getting that heat on at the root, and really smoothing that out, flattening that out. So whatever way the hair's kicking that I don't want, I try and tackle it by working with the brush in the opposite direction. Now the other thing, I don't know how using beard oil on hair is going to go. So let's see, it might go a little bit shiny, but that would be cool. So I'm just going to do the same now on the other side, you see. I'm going to use gravity to help me, to move in the hair. really flattening out those hairlines. If you have any questions now, Monica is sitting there and she can ask any questions if you have any. Please let me know. Let me know what you think of this internal shape so far. I find that often when you're doing haircuts like this, what happens is, is you put in 80% of the work on the interior, doing what we're doing now. But then really, 80% of the look comes from the last 20% when we're playing around and throwing around with the outlines. That's when that shape really comes to life. And you can really explore your creativity when you're doing that. Um, do you do this style for your clients? Um, like I've, I've never done this exact haircut before in this choice of length. I've cut hair in similar ways, yes. And a really good little tip as well is, if you do find that on like your graduated shapes or something that you, you struggle because your hairlines always end up jumping up, then maybe try leaving a little panel out at the bottom for safety in that area. And that way you know that you're always going to have length, you're not going to have jumps where the hairline jumps up. So I do that, yeah, definitely. But I have clients like all the rest of you. you know, I have clients that some of them let me do whatever I want, but I still, you know, when I was younger maybe, and a bit more frivolous, I used to kind of just go wild and if someone said do what you want, I'm just trying to do the most creative haircut I could possibly think of. And um, not all of them were that happy, naturally. And what I've started to see more is I've, I've focused much more on um, the suitability. And sometimes if someone says, "What you know, do it whatever you want," and just a little box bob or something very classic to suit them, I'll do something classic. You know, I think suitability is a massive thing, and I actually train myself by things like sitting on the tube. And I look at people and I look at their face and I say, right, what haircut would I give them if they come in tomorrow? And that's a really good way just to start getting your eyes working and thinking about suitability. So I'm just going to this last little bit on that second side now. Smoothing all this through. I think when you're using disconnection like this, I do tend to like to, to try and break it up a touch, so I will be using some pointing. But what I tend to prefer is to use the points at the end of the haircut. So once I've dried everything, I can really see and assess the way. That's when I'll start to use the pointing. Sylvia says you are very young, James. What's your story? I'm very young. <laughs> Um, thank you. Maybe I look well. I'm 28. 
Uh, I started, I actually started hairdressing when I was 16. Um, I was studying psychology first and then I thought I wanted to do something with my hands. And my hairdresser at the time offered me a job and I was like, okay, why not? And then, um, and then I guess after about two years I really found what I wanted to do was um, like precision cutting. I started, I became part of this, uh, this little art team called Project Deck, which is this really amazing thing from the Fellowship of Hairdressing in London. Uh, which is just a little team of, of young and upcoming hairdressers that used to meet once a month and we used to do different days with different amazing hair artists. So we did, for example, we did shoot from Zoe Irwin. We had days with Mark Haynes, with Mahogany. And that was when I really found what I wanted. I was like, wow, precision hair cutting was the thing that I really wanted. So that's where I started my journey. We started following, found a company that took, took me on. And I retrained and I bartered for like six months doing, you know, four models every day which was hideous, but it was the best thing I've ever done. And, you know, by that time, I, I kind of, by 21, I became a, an educator. I started teaching. I started teaching within, um, you know, in the academy where I was working and just really starting to, you know, understand about sharing, understand how to share, understand why to share. So I think that's a really important thing. A lot of us, uh, a lot of us focus on the on the fact that we want to be teachers, but not many people focus on why. Why do you want to be a teacher? A lot, of, a lot of people want to do it for ego. You know, I know, you know, for a fact that when I first started teaching, for the first reason I started to want to teach was probably, if I'm being completely honest with you, it was probably a bit of my ego. I wanted to be like, you know. You know, I've worked really hard, this is how good I am, I wanted to show people how good I am. And, and that's, that changes, that really changed for me, and I think it's really important. And whenever I teach people that are becoming educators now, I make sure that I tell them, you know, that this is not, this is not something for you. You don't need to be the best haircutter in the world to be the best educator. You can be an amazing haircutter and a bad educator. It's about, you know, why you're doing it. Now what I want to do is just start to assess what I've got and start to assess the look and where I want to start placing my, my shape. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this now, I'm going to do it quite roughly. So I've still got the top to do and I'm going to finish it really nice at the end, so I'm still going to read loads up. But just for a visual reference, I just want to start to have a little look at how this is going to come along. So, but I don't think it's a little bit closer to you. You can see. That's right. Um, somebody can asked. See, can you see in the in the in the phone? Can you see this? Yes. Somebody yeah. asked where you're based. So I'm based in London. So we have an academy in the centre of London in Soho, and we run courses from there. But we also travel internationally, teaching all over the world. So um, I'm actually haven't been to Poland yet, so that would be um, that would definitely be something that, that we'll be looking at, at doing in the future, which would be really cool. Um, now, will you use the free hands technique drive? Yes, exactly. So I'm doing now. I'm just roughly popping in an outline. I don't want it to be perfect. I'm not going to make it perfect yet. I'm going to really focus on it later on. But I just want to put in a rough little outline. First of all, for me, just to get my visual guide there, and also for you guys, just so you can start to see where my where my idea is here. You don't think I'm completely crazy? Because all the refining and perfecting will come at the very end once I've finished the blow dry. Because on these dolls, it's quite different to a human. We like it's almost like you're doing a shoot. It's better just to finish spray and then work your outline. So you're almost styling it before you cut the outline in. Best regards from Windsor. Oh, thank you so much for tuning in. Windsor, lovely part of the UK. I can see now as well that I need to get this hairline 
just blow dry it in a little bit flatter as well, which I'll be doing. And when I'm checking my outline, I'm coming all the way from underneath, so looking from below, looking from the mid, and looking from the top, because you're going to see a different thing each time. It's really important that we do that. So that's why sometimes, I'm sure we've all done it, when you've got a client in there, and you've got a head right down like this, and you're focusing, cutting in this outline, and she puts her head back up, and you go, oh shit, it's not what I thought it was. So I think, you know, it's really important, a bit of advice there. Um, Sarah Potter says, I'm trying to study my level two in hairdressing, but with the lockdown, it's on, uh, but with lockdown, it's on how, on hold, how are you doing with the lockdown? Um, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm quite lucky, um, I'm quite lucky in my situation that I'm not on my own, you know, um, I'm missing hair, but I've, I, you know, I'm doing quite a few of these live videos, which is really, really nice for me to be able to have something to do. Um, I'm being able to share, which is amazing, which, is, which I'm really passionate about and that I love. So, I think it could be worse, but it's definitely, it's definitely not easy. I don't think it's easy for anyone. So I'm just going to come in now from the front and do the similar thing from the other side. And again, I'm not focusing really on perfecting this outline right now. I'm going to be doing that towards the end of the haircut after I've cut my technique in at the top. But guys, let me know what you're thinking of the, of the shape so far. If you like it, if you don't. <laughs> Working with the blunts of my scissors at the moment, just because I'm really just putting in the rough guide of the shape. When I'm really refining it, I'm going to start using the points of the scissors. And that's when I can really start to edit the shape, edit the line, and get exactly how I want it. There's not much weight in this outline now because we've obviously used a lot of elevation through the haircut. We've reduced the weight within the outline. So I'm just getting a little bit of a visual guide through here. So when I'm working the top, I know a little bit more and I can have a bit more feeling about where I'm going with it. Okay. Uh, it looks beautiful. I love this shape. Thank you so much. Let's see how it finishes up then. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now, guys, is when I'm working with disconnection, etc., I always like to focus on the shortest areas first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on this fringe area. This is going to be disconnected from the rest of the top. So let me get this through. I'm just going to get a little bit of water in through there as well. Now what I want to create, as you can see, this section through the top, if I take that head down slightly, as you can see it's quite slim in this front hairline, okay? So there's not too much of it, so my fringe will actually probably come from a bit further back, but what I want to do first is really reduce this weight, because I want the fringe to have different feelings to it. I want it to be flat, I want it to have length in it, I want it to be layered, I want like this length was falling over the top. So what I'm going to do here, if I tilt this over so you can see, I'm going to start with a centre section, so make sure my head's nice and straight. I'm going to start with a centre section. Marcos Santos says, I do love those different types of haircuts as different styles. First time here, by the way. Oh, well, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Okay, just back to this fringe quickly. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to start, again, cutting a length that is going to be longer than I actually want. This 
especially on these dolls and with people with jumpy hairlines and etc., much better to leave more length than you want originally. So I can see straight away that I've got too much length in there, although what I'm really focused on is the internal. So I'm going to flatten that out much more. Notice again that because I'm flattening, I'm actually using vertical sections. That's much better now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the base. So each section I take, okay, I'm going to pull out to the middle of that section. So one and two in the middle, two and three in the middle. So on the base. Let me know if you have any questions, guys. Let me know if that makes sense. I want to do something that leaves much more length in this top area that we can play around with later. Okay, Monica's going to have another go at holding the uh, at holding. Okay, so Marcos has another question. He says, how can I cut the fringe and be able to use both both ways, even to the left or to the right side, literally even when I part the hair in the middle? Okay, well, I, I, get, um, I get requests like that quite a lot, actually, from clients that I'm like, where do you wear it? She's like, well, I move it, I move it everywhere. If people move it everywhere, then I find that Doing something balanced, so cut, you know, in the centre works really well, so it's balanced all the way through and as it moves. Now, what I find works for me quite nicely is that what I'm doing is I'm layering the hair more generally when I'm doing this. So what that does is it allows the hair to move a little bit more, it adds a bit of movement to it and freedom. If I just cut everything down into a line, for example, it doesn't allow much freedom because of the weight. So what I might do is bring this down for the weight and then start to elevate. So that way you're going to have much more of a layered effect through the fringe. That way the fringe is just going to move much more. But also I always think that if the hair wants, if you want it to be able to move side to side, okay, then what I would do is leave the length longer. So advise your client or your guest, if she wants the length here, say, well, we're going to leave it here for today. And that way you can actually move it side to side. Okay. Let me know if that answers your question, Marco. Thank you for the question. Okay, so I'm just coming to my last couple of sections up through here. Elevating up into the centre of my sections. Marcos says, yes, absolutely. Fabulous. <laughs> and my last section now. And now what you'll probably actually find is, so I'm just going to have a little look, and I think my lengths from my hair that I've cut on the underneath, see, actually connect into my fringe. So it's going to be that real nice fluidity now working through. Now, because I've had that pinned up, it's a little bit jumpy, so I'm just going to make sure that works down. And as the hair dries naturally, it will dry flatter for me. So I'm just going to take exactly the same way the other side. I'm going to move my body position because I'm more likely to pull towards me. So I'm actually going to change my body position towards the other side, which is going to help me control the same amount of over direction. I'm going to come in, lift up, very clearly see my guideline, and work that down. Let me know if you can see everything okay guys. And notice I'm only working up to this point of my knuckle. As soon as I get past there, look at my scissors, I start to lose tension. So what we end up doing is we end up chasing weight all over the hair when we're doing that. So it's a nice little tip. Just try and focus on that area. You'll find that your haircuts will become much cleaner. Got a cut off 
lot more sections now through this fringe. And we're going to leave. And then we're going to come to our last zone, which is this top zone through here, where we're going to start to play around with some quite longer lengths sitting over all this underneath. So it's going to be quite an interesting finish because what I wanted to do is I wanted to put a foundation in, but I wanted to really show bringing a shape to life when it's dry, so at the end. So what I'm going to be doing is, is a lot of freehanding, a lot of visual work when this hair is actually dry at the end. Um, what scissors are you using? So I am using a four and a half pair of NYX. NYX scissors they're called. And they're 4.5 in length. Um, really beautiful scissor. A really nice thin blade, but a nice weighted handle. For me, it's all about the the blade size and the weight of the handle. I like a small scissor, generally, because I feel like I have much more control with a small scissor. Uh, Marcos says one of the latest um, ones that he's seen is a long side fringe, which is quite lovely, but he always got the feeling that it's too much hair to take, uh, hair to take, to section it. What could you say about that? So I know he meant too much hair is taken while it's being sectioned for a long side fringe. I think really with um, it's up to you what you want to do. What you've got to start, I think what's really important we all have to do is start thinking about suitability. Now, for example, if I wanted to make the face more narrow, okay, and slim this face, which is going to give it much more length, right? I would section off slimmer, okay? Look what that does to the face. It starts to slimmer. If I wanted to give the face more width, if the face was very slim already, I could make the fringe wider, which is going to really open it up, okay? So that's what it's going to do. Now, if I wanted to shorten the face in width, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a longer fringe, and that's going to, look what happens, it's going to shorten the face. If I wanted to open the face more and add a bit more length, I'm going to take the fringe shorter, okay? Now, you have to do that within what your client wants as well, of course, but I think it's really important that you advise that and you understand that, you acknowledge it before you start your technique. So let me know that answers your question. I hope it does. And now we're on to our final zone. And I'm going to work from shorter into longer through here. The reason being, just so I have this nice length in the front that I can play around with. I'm rapidly run out of water. I'm just gonna spray down a bit, so I'm gonna move left. Justina says, wow, you're good at explaining. Thanks, Justina. <laughs> I try. I think, you know, it's really important as well, like I was saying about, you know, when we're educating, like, I want to really, you know, I, I don't do it for me, I do it for, for, for other people. I want to help, I want to share, you know, and I, I love being shared and I love people sharing with me and taking knowledge from other people. I think that's what it's all about. Uh, Marcos says, wow, that makes total sense. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks a lot, Marcos. the French. It's going to be interesting how this fringe develops. <laughs> okay. So really what I'm doing now is I'm going to create quite an extreme disconnection in the length that I have here to the length I'm going to have on top. And it's going to be a very visual connection at the end when the hair's dry, which we're going to be playing with today, which I think will be quite fun. Because what, what I did as well is I looked... Um, I looked at the previous lives that Sebastian, the people of Sebastian have had at, um, at Curilo on this page and I wanted to, I wanted to, you know, mix it up a little bit and add something a little bit, a little bit different to maybe what you guys that, that follow, um, follow the journey have seen previously. And I wanted to, you know, do something a little bit different to what I normally do as well. Because if we're not pushing ourselves, we're not learning. And that's what we have to remember. 
Um, where are you based and do you also do hair cut cutting classes? Who's that? What's Marcos. Marcos. Thank you, Marcos. Um, the answer to that question is yes. I'm, we are based in London, so I'm director for Slate Hair Education. We're based, we have an academy in Soho, in London, where we run courses every month. So we have specific courses we run every, every month. We run one-to-ones as well, and we do bespoke education for, for whoever wants it. Now, we also are focusing on um, geometric foundations, along with abstract courses and creative. So we really have a big variety. And if you want to check out our Facebook or Instagram at Slate Hair Education and give us a message for any further information, then we can give it to you. Um, thinking about this later quickly. Sorry. But yes, the answer is yes, we do run courses, but we also travel internationally and um, and teach either teach salons. We travel in the UK as well. We travel, you know, to where, wherever we're wanted, basically. We'll go, we'll come and, and see you guys and spend some time with you and share with you. So I'm just, if you can see, working on a triangular cutting line, which means I'm going slightly shorter in the back to slightly longer towards the front. I'm just going to assess the length that I'm hitting. And look, I'm thinking about where this is going to be falling on the head. So I'm going to come, I'm going to take that section up. I'm going to take that a tiny bit shorter. So again, focusing and keeping clean, keeping tension. Because if you can't comb clean, you can't cut clean. It's as simple as that. I think everyone, everyone could spend some time focusing on their combing. Such an integral part of, of hair cutting. And a part that really we don't really get taught. I feel like we just get expect, you know, we're just expected to be able to comb hair amazingly. It doesn't quite work like that. I actually think it's it's very intricate being able to comb hair properly. I think people won't see that quite often. Okay, guys. So that's my first section done, and I'm happy with that length now. As we can see, we're going to have quite a lot of overhanging, but I'm quite into that. We're going to be refining everything later. Now, I'm going to take my next section of this side and just come up to my guide and work in the same way, making sure my sections are nice and clean all the time. So, guys, let me know if what I'm saying is making sense. Let me know if you're if you're liking what you're seeing. And again, please like and share the video. Thank you so much for, for joining us today. Let me know where you're tuning in from and what time you're at. Now guys, we know now, I've got a little question for you. We know what our shape is in our cutting angle, it's triangular because we're going shorter at the back to longer at the front. What technique am I using at the moment? Anyone answer what my technique is that I'm using at the moment? Question time. <laughs> Any answers? Not yet. Oh uh, yes, Marcos says basically short hair is one of the most challenging haircut to be do done. However, what kind of advice would you give about that? How do you get a perfect short haircut done? Um, that's really interesting. I think a barber would disagree with you. I think a barber would say 
long hair had so much powder. It's what you're, it's what you're used to. Um, for me, yeah, I think technically short hair is harder because it's more intricate. Um, you know, you're doing a little bit more sometimes on long hair, you're just cutting in a line at the base. You know, short hair can, can be much more intricate than what you're doing. Um, for me, I think the, the most integral parts of it are making sure that your work is clean, okay? Making sure that your sections are very clean and you have a good understanding of what you're doing, okay? Think about not only what you're going to be doing and what your technique is, look at what your canvas is. Now, what is our canvas? Our canvas is the head and the face. That is what our work is sitting on or your art is sitting on, okay? It's the face and the head. So if I did exactly the same haircut on two different people with two completely different head shapes, the haircut would look completely different. So I think in your consultation, it's really important that we study this and we really see what the head shape is doing. Every client I have, I get, and I feel their head and I feel where it recedes. Okay, if something is receding, which means going in, do I need to fill it out? If I want to fill it out, what technique do I need to use? Maybe graduation. If I want to flatten something out, what am I going to do later, you know? Where do I want the weight placed? So I'm looking at the shape and the horizontal plane. So I think when we really understand hair cutting as opposed to learn, learning hair cuts, that's when we can really start to play around and really build up our own haircuts to, to suit that individual. Each haircut in its own little way should be slightly different, you know? In your client, you should progress, and each client you should do slightly different to the previous. Um, also, an answer to your question before, people have said club cutting or layers. Perfect, that's what I was looking for, layers. So yes, club cutting, we're cutting straight across, but at Slate, what we talk about our technique is, is our technique is controlled by our elevation. Okay, so if we have zero elevation, what we're doing is we're cutting a line, okay, a line or a one length. Okay, then when we start to build up the hair, so we think that's a line, when we start to build up, so start to elevate out, anywhere from here to here is graduation, all right? The lower we are, the heavier, we start to get lighter, 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 okay? Then as soon as we come above that point, we're layering, okay, we're starting now to remove weight. So we've got line, Heavy, heavy graduation starts to get lighter, lighter, and then into layering. All right, so yes, that's correct. Because we're putting air straight out from the head, we are now working on a layering technique. Which means we're flattening, removing weight, encouraging movement. And still keeping that nice triangular shape where I'm working from shorter in the back longer towards the front. I've just got a couple more sections in now through here, through this top panel. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow dry this all, assess it, and then start to really play around. And that's when this whole look is going to come to life. After I blow dry it, when I start getting my vision into it, and doing that last 20%, 15% of the haircut is when the whole 80% of that look is really gonna start to, start to come. So guys, please, if you have any questions about what I'm doing so far or any other questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. The more questions, the better. Work on my last section now. Keeping that nice tension throughout as I'm combing. And what I'm going to do is really blow dry this all so it's all kind of molded in together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use pointing to really blend in all these lengths and shapes. Um, do you prefer to do long or short cuts? Um, I think a lot of us, especially 
you know, us guys that like to do shorter, shorter um, hair, more precision haircuts, we tend to focus more on shorter hair because we can get more graphic finishes. But actually, when working on long hair, we can have a lot of fun with it just because our long hair clients often tend to prefer something that's much more, much more simple, much more basic, much more classic. But I do probably push towards shorter hair because I think I can play around with it a little bit more. Okay, I'm just going to get a touch more water. Bear with me one second. Okay. Um, does the position of the scissors tend to change the outcome of the haircut? For instance, if I go from the top to back or from the bottom up, will it change the results? I think, like I, like I said previously, I think the main thing that you have to remember is that everything has a consequence and that as human we have, humans we have tendencies, okay? Now by that what I mean is, if I, attend, if I work from the top to the bottom, I'm much more likely to create a flatter shape, more likely to create a layered or flatter shape. If I work from the bottom up, I'm going to tend to create a heavier shape, okay? Now, I think, you know, if I'm standing over here, I'm more likely to over-direct hair towards me, okay? If I'm standing back here, I'm more likely to over-direct hair towards me, all right? However, I could stand here and over-direct hair over here, it's just more awkward. So we need to just always think about why we're doing things. So it's all good being able to do stuff, and saying, oh, I'm going to do this amazing thing, and blah, blah, blah. But let's start thinking about why we're doing it. Why do we do this? And that's going to make us all better hairdressers, I think, because we're in the end, you know, if we start to have an understanding of why. That's why I remember when I first started teaching, people were asking me questions. And I was like, shit, I don't know the answer. And that's when I was like, right, I need to understand everything inside now so I can never be stumped in a question. And I made it like my mission, I still make it my mission to this day, to understand everything in the, in the physics really behind cutting hair. So let me know if that answers your question, I hope it does. So I really just want to move the hair around a bit now. I'm just getting, this is literally just water, a bit of water just so I can blend everything together after my blow dry earlier. And I'm just going to re-blow dry all this hair, which is really an integral part of this haircut as well. In any, any haircut, I think the blow dry is really important, especially when you have to do refining. I think it's really important that you focus on, on not just precision in cutting hair, but precision in your technique as your blow dry as well. Amazing cut, perfect cut, love the cut. Thank you so much, guys. I'm going to use a little We're bit We're watching beard oil. carefully. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more beard oil on that top bit. Right. And now, let's blow it up. So I know this is maybe probably the boring bit for you guys, but I think, like I said earlier, it's really important. So I'm just going to tilt the head away from the area that I'm working on. So I can use, look how I can use gravity now to move the hair out of the way and focus on the hair on the underneath. What I want to do is imagine it like a building. You don't start building a wall halfway up. You have to start at the bottom and build the layers on top. That's how we're focusing on the flow dry as well. We want to start focusing on those bottom bits, the bits that are going to jump and move. And if I can get them nice and clean, then hopefully the rest of the hair will follow. Guys, let me know what kind of blow dryers you tend to do more at work, whether you like to do these kind of wrap dry techniques, whether you do more round brushing, what kind of stuff you like. It's always interesting to hear. I personally use a mixture. Really want to just flatten this out now. Because it's because of the doll as well, and the hair does tend to sit a bit, a bit fuller and a bit fatter. I'm really going to use some nice tension and some heat on those roots to try and flatten that out. I'm 
Once I've focused on the roots, I'm going to move on to the ends more and focus on the finish of those ends. But really, all the movement in the, root, in the ends comes from the root. So if this hair, if you can see, if it's kicking backwards, I'm going to push forwards for the hair to, to balance out. If it's kicking forwards too much, I'm going to kick it backwards to start to balance it out. So as you can see, like what I said earlier, I've got all these serious disconnected lengths, but I really want to see a kind of quite a connected finish in there. I want the hair to all blend and mould together. People are saying mostly round brushes. Mostly round brushes. Yeah, I think, you know, I think actually people see this wrap drying thing as a bit of a as a bit of a flop and not a proper blow dry, but actually wrap drying is so important because you're really focusing on root movement and root movements where it is I find with the round brush, if I go straight in I struggle. I can't get the root really clean, yeah? The hair's going to be all still really wet. So what I might do is I might use a vest or a demo brush or a paddle brush to get those roots how I want them. And then when I have the roots right, then I can pick up the round brush. Ooh. Pick up the round brush. <laughs> and start to play around using the round brush on the ends more. But like I said, it all depends on what, what you want to create. I would say I'd, I'd use a flat brush and probably about 80%, 70 or 80% of my clients. But I do like getting around my chance as well occasionally. Okay. I'm going to move the head now to the opposite direction so I can now focus on this side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch hands. So I'm now focused, I've got my brush now in the left hand. The reason being because I want to brush that hair forward. This is difficult. So to make it easier, I'm going to use the left. What you'll find a lot of the time is if you only blow dry with one hand, you will end up getting quite a, a flicky haircut that only goes to one side. So you might find it flips back on this side and forward on the other. So it's really nice to try and practice being a bit more ambidextrous with the blow dryer. And again, I'm just really focusing on getting those roots nice and flat. But so back to uh, what we were talking about earlier a little bit with the, with the academy, etc. in London. We're actually really lucky. We've just... Um, We've only been open in the academy for a year. Before that, we were completely independent, travelling around to people. So now we actually have a base and a home where, where you can come to or bring your team to for, um, for education of all sorts. And what we're doing is we're actually extending an extra two floors. So we're going to have a three-floor academy, which is really amazing because it means we can have bigger teams, we can have bigger classes, we can have different um, different classes going on at the same time, so it's going to be really cool. Really cool. We really encourage if any of you are ever in London, please don't hesitate just to come and say hello. We're always, you know, we're always going to be around. Drop us a line on Facebook or Instagram or anything. Chuck us a message. Make sure we're around, and we'll we'll visit. You know, we're happy. We can have a coffee together. We can chill. You can come and see the see the academy, although it's, you know, it's a really, it is a learning environment, you know, and, and we do treat it like that. We like to have quite a nice relaxed approach, you know. Like I said earlier, the most important thing is, it doesn't matter how much you're learning, if you're not having fun, then something's not right. We're starting to get it's sitting a little bit flatter for me, which I'm liking. Starting to get these outlines sitting how I want.
And if I can, I'm going to try and avoid using an iron. I'm going to try and just focus on using, using the brush today. Because I want to be able to move the hair as well. Sometimes I feel with the iron, it can just make the hair a bit set and a bit stuck. So I'm, it almost doesn't look quite real. So I like, for me, I quite like hair that moves, you know. Maria says, I'm impressed, mega work. Thank you so much. Right, so thank you all so much for tuning in. It's really, uh, really amazing. And thank you so much to Sebastian and the guys at the Kulo Academy for, uh, for giving us this chance to share with you. It's been super fun. It still isn't finished. I'm just going to really have a look at this fringe now. And make sure I'm getting that nice and flat, the roof. You can see we've got this really nice layered texture in there. And I'm just really making sure I'm really smoothing that out. More so than I would be doing on a human. <laughs> That would probably be hanging there by now. Grazie, really... James. Sorry? Grazie, James. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Hello from Canada. Hello, thank you so much for joining. Guys, if you've just tuned in, please do carry on watching, feel free, but we are just coming towards the end of the blow dry, and I'm going to be really refining the shape now towards the end. But this, this video will be on the Facebook page, you will be able to go back to it, and if you're watching this that isn't live, then I will come back and I will answer any questions that you do have as we go in. But you know, this was just a little bit more of a bit of a fun little session for me. I wanted to do something that's a little bit different to what I do normally. I wanted to play around with something that maybe you haven't, haven't seen in, in, in the last few weeks. Have a little bit of a toy around. Um, have you ever done any seminars in Ireland or would you come over? Um, years ago, I've worked, yes, I've, I've, um, I've worked in Dublin. Uh, I've done a couple of seminars over in Dublin, um, and I've actually got two two students who are both based in Cork who fly over to London to see me once or twice a year, um, which is really cool. They're both amazing girls separately, um, separately. Funny enough, both from Cork, yeah, but they're such a good crack. But yeah, I'd love to come to Ireland. I'm always up for going anywhere. Whereabouts in Ireland are you based? Let us know. Okay guys, so I'm just going to come in now with my other brush. It just has a bit more tension. As you can see now, this has got the, the softer bristle on the top, but it's got almost like a hard, bory bristle through the underneath. And what that's going to do is just going to give me a little bit more tension through the ends. Okay, so we're getting there. I'm liking how it's looking. Uh, do you do any courses in Leeds? In Leeds. So, really, the courses that we run, the courses that we run that are set up for the year, are all in the academy in London. However, if you wanted us to come to you, for either one-to-one -one or come to your salon, for example, then we do travel to anywhere for education. So if you wanted us to come to your salon in Leeds, for example, we could absolutely arrange that. Please just uh, either give us a message on our Facebook or Instagram at Slate Hair Education, or my email address, which I'll pop in afterwards as well, is james at slatehair.com. And my, um, you can get onto my Instagram as well. Uh, Martin says he's from the northwest of Ireland near Derry. Oh, lovely. 
Are you on the coast? Are you on the coast? Are you in surfing, surfing land over there? I know there's some pretty amazing waves over there. And just look now, focus on this tension. Really slimming down. That ends. And because I've focused on the roots already, what I'm doing is I'm just working with the brush and the mid lengths and the ends. Just getting a slight bevel in there. And what you can see as well, I'm not using any clips. The reason why is because if I start doing this and clipping it all up, I'm ruining the blow dry I've already done. Ru ruining that wrap dry. So what I'm doing is I'm just moving the hair out of the way. Using the brush to pick up the hair that I'm wanting to work on. gratification that you get from cutting hair, you know. If it's colour, I'm like, okay, I've got it on, and then I'm checking it, and I'm waiting an hour for the result. With a haircut, you know, I'm getting that instantly, and I'm seeing it. And that's really what, what I fell in love with. If there's a hole in there, it's because I've cut it there, it's something I've done wrong, it's something I have to fix. I'm just going to come round now into this back area. Whoop. And again, moving the hair out of the way to the side, doing a brush round, down the hair shaft, just trying to get that nice little bit of shine on there. Uh, what hair dryer are you using? Uh, this is a Dyson actually. I've not had it for very long, I've only had it for a month or two. But it's really good for things like these lives because it's quite quiet. So I find, you know, sometimes when you've got a big funky hairdresser, hairdresser, <laughs> pardon me, funky hairdryer, then, um, you know, it can be quite hard to hear. So for me, I, I actually really like it. And the way that um, it's very light, so I like that as well. It's a little bit weak for me. Again, yeah, with products and, and tools and everything, I think it's it's very personal, isn't it? It's a very personal thing. Uh, what prices are your courses? Okay, so if you have actually gone to our website, slatehaireducation.com, it will go through all the prices because it varies in what we're doing. Um, you know, whether we're doing most of our geometric courses, our courses are two days, but we also run bespoke courses for the individual. So if you give me an email, james at slatehair.com, okay, james at slatehair.com, I will get back to you and we can talk a little bit more about prices, etc., and what we can do for you. You know, at the moment in London, we're still in lockdown. So as we stand, we don't know when our courses will be beginning, but we're pretty sure that in July we should be coming out and salons should be allowed to open again. So hopefully by July we'll be starting up our courses again and I'll be able to travel again. And we can start working with them together. Cool. I actually I had a student, one of my um, first students I had with Slate was a Polish girl. Um, who, uh, who knew about Trudeau Project Academy, knew Sebastian. And, um, and yeah, she was just moving back to Poland and the stuff she wanted. And we had the most amazing, just a one-to-one, -one, three days. We really, really, such an amazing time. Yeah, I really want to visit Poland, actually. 
I like Tiskey, so that's a good start. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my slightly wider tooth comb, but when refining, I'm working on dry hair. I prefer to use a wider tooth, I just feel it gives a little bit more em empathy with the hair. Um, do you do colour courses? Um, at the moment, uh, we, we're we starting to introduce colour courses, yes. So we have a colourist that we work with quite a lot and we're starting to introduce them. So again, if you do want to have a colour course, please just inquire, give us an email, even just message our Facebook or our Instagram at Slate Hair Education and we will get back to you. Okay. So what I want to do is first of all work, start breaking up my internal lengths, okay? And then after that, when I'm going to start focusing on the perimeter. And by the perimeter, I mean these lengths through here and the fringe. So what I'm going to do is again, I'm going to carry on working nice and clean as I have been. Using this white tooth and just start to really break into that hair in the top. So I'm cutting really deep into it, but my scissors are going straight in, so I'm not going at too much of a V, I'm going straight in. And what that's doing is it's reducing the length quite a lot within it and leaving a lot of the length still where it is. So I'm not taking massive chunks out, I'm taking quite a lot of length out. And what's going to happen is, is that length then is going to start to blend a little bit more with it underneath. So the whole thing is just going to feel quite seamless. Guys, I want to say another thank you to Sebastian and to all of you for, for watching. Really appreciate you giving me your time, especially on a Friday night. It's not that a lot of us have too much to do now that we're, we're in lockdown. But it's been a real honour and pleasure to be able to share share some hair, hair with you guys. Um, I haven't, I haven't, I've never worked with Sebastian before, so it's a really amazing thing and hopefully you know, a great partnership that we can look at in the future. So I want to real thank, thank Sebastian as well for inviting me. So we can see when it's up, look how dramatic that disconnection is. You get the camera around so you can see. You can see how dramatic that disconnection is, but as we all fall, everything just has this really nice little blend on it. Hello from Budapest. Oh, Budapest. We love Budapest. Amazing city. Thank you so much for tuning in. Guys, like I said, this video will still be on Facebook when we're finished. You can go back to it as often or as to whatever point you like. And please, if you're watching this and it's not live, Feel free, yeah, to ask questions still, and I will get back to you. I'll be checking it over the next week or so, just making sure. Next Sunday, I'm going live with, um, there's an, a new cool little wave in Australia, with all these cool guys that have come together called, um, let me get this right, Aftermath Hair Ed, which is run by um, a friend of mine, Kobe. So I'm going to be doing a live for those guys next Sunday as well. So please follow the Slate journey. We've got loads of Slate lives on our Facebook page. So if you ever get, feel like checking some stuff out, have a little look. Always let us know what you think. So uh, what's your Facebook site? Our Facebook is Slate Hair Education. Mine personally, I'm James Akers. But we are Slate Hair Education. We've got mainly me doing the lives on there, but we've got a bit of a mixture as well. We've got some from Michael as well. I'm just going to come through as I've worked both sides of the centre. Work from the front to the back, doing the same thing. Just breaking up what we've done here. Then after that, I'm going to start to toy around with the outlines. And I really want, I think what's going to really make this pop is working in this fringe. So I'm going to save that to the last. 
I think that's going to be really fun, really cool. Okay, now, I want to get a bit of perspective now. And what's really important, okay, when we're working is, it's not about what we cut off. This hair on the floor is completely irrelevant. It's about what we're leaving behind, all right? So if you think about an eye sculptor, for example, who's sculpting a face, he's never here looking at what he's doing, all right? We're always obsessed with looking at this line in here. What we want to start focusing on is what is happening here. So what's happening whoop, behind the line, all right? What I'm leaving behind on this head, on the face. That's what's really important. So I need to now step back and start to really visually see what I've got and what I want, what's working and what's not. So I'm just going to start now. Just again, so I'm not going to do it finished, but I'm just going to start to put in what I, what I think I want in these, out of these outlines. <laughs> Justina says cleaning the house today is, will take me all day because I've just watched some live video. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's worth it for seeing this. So again, I'm looking from the underneath and from the top. It's really important when we're finding these lines. Okay. And I'm going to work into the back here so you can run touch. Um, Phil Benton asks, where your, where is your ring from? Thank you so much for the question, Phil. So, <clears throat> actually, Phil, why don't you tell everyone where it's from? Maybe that would be better. <laughs> Phil's a very good friend of mine. And he, he sold me this, this ring. Uh, Jasmine Fairbrass says, I would actually love this haircut for myself. Oh, well, that's good. Where are you from, Jasmine? Maybe you can come and see me. What I think is really nice with something like this is it, it can be, the dressing of it is really going to change it. So it can be dressed quite sleek and quite, you know, almost a bit more graphic or it can be dressed much softer, much more messy, which I'll show you at the end. So what I tend to do when working these outlines is I tend to work with the blunts of my scissors to get my shape, roughly, get cleanish. And then what I do is I use the points to perfect the shape. I'm going to get my whole shape in on both sides with the blunts and then I'm going to use the point to really start to perfect it and to be honest I'm probably not even going to dress it in this really sleek way but for me what I want out of a haircut is whatever I do with it I want it to look nice so having that structure in it is really important Okay, and I'm going to come from the other side and start to mirror what I've done in the first side. So guys, when I do this next live, because what I'm trying to do is every live I'm doing, I'm trying to do a bit of a variety of things. So I've done a couple of slightly more creative, so I'm going to go for something a bit more classic next time and go for a really nice, strong triangle graduated bob, which I think would be quite nice, but I'm going to add a little bit of fun to it as well. So a little twist, let's say. So 
Guys, let me know what you're thinking of the shape, whether you like it, whether you hate it. I want to know. Maria says, thank you for your time. How to learn from the best. Thank you so much, Maria. Thank you for your time. This refining really is an important, an important part of the haircut. So as we take this time, so you know, get that how we want it. Because, like I said, it really does bring this haircut to life. Cutting and blunt cutting. Uh, Sarah Potter asks, why does it go, why does it go down into a point at the back? So the reason why I've done that is because I find on these shapes, they make it a little bit more feminine to have an arch. So when I say arch, what I mean is, I mean a curved line. If I cut this very square in the back, which could be nice, but what you're also doing is you're making the neck look wider. By putting this curve in, what I'm doing is, is I'm actually opening up the neck through here. And by curve, curved lines as humans, we see as softer. So for me, I think it's just, it's a personal opinion, but for me, I think it's just a little bit more, more feminine and a bit prettier. Just coming around, try not to get too much in the way of the camera, but still want you to be able to see what I'm creating. Let me know if that answers your question, Sarah. And what do you think? What, how do you prefer it? Joanna says she loves the back shape. Thank you so much. But like I said, you know, guys, it's, it's personal. It's all about what you like, you like what, when you're doing your thing. So I'm starting to get the sort of shape that I'm wanting now. So uh, Martin asks, do you think it suits dark hair? better than blondes and it looks amazing thank you thank you so much um i think that darker hair first of all tends to be not always but can tend to be a bit thicker so in that case in that sense then it helps because the outline's a bit stronger um the other thing i would say is that for me, with with um, with the density to the eye, darker hair, you can see outlines much more. So, you know, there's no, I wouldn't say there was a right or a wrong, um, but I think that it's more obvious when you create these outlines on darker hair. Right guys, now I'm gonna go into natural full here. What I'm gonna do is really start to play around with this brim. Now, as you can see on this underneath, you can see I've got these lengths, okay? These shorter lengths. Now what I'm going to do is, I don't want to completely connect everything in, but I want to start to connect some of it. So I'm just going to tilt the head backwards, and I would do this on the client actually. Let me know if she likes it or not. I'm going to take a little bit more hair than what was in my original section. Uh, Monica asks, what do you think about thinning scissors and do you do you use them? Um, that's a really good question. I, I do very occasionally use them. The re I actually don't have any at the moment. I would, I would love to get some. The reason I don't use them very often is because I haven't mastered using them. I feel like the reason why there's a bad omen 
about these things and these tools is because people use them to hide mistakes. Okay, now what I don't want to do is be using something to hide mistakes and to make things easier for me or to hide weight. I feel like if something's too heavy, it's probably something that's wrong with my technique as opposed to something that's actually wrong um, as, a, as opposed to something I need to fix with a, with a, with a razor or with a thinning scissor. But, however, I'm not against using razors or thinning scissors at all. I think that's quite an old stigma now. And I think that, you know, we need to evolve as, as, as hairdressers and we need to realise that you can't create every single thing with a pair of scissors. You know, a razor will have a different effect. And as, if, you, if you're using it for the right reasons, then I think that's an amazing tool to use. I think the reason why there's a bad stigma around them is because people have used them previously to hide mistakes. And what I'm getting is that really nice broken fringe, which I'm, I'm liking, I'm liking it. I'm just gonna really do a few little, last little touches. I might take another layer even. I'm just experimenting here. I'm just having a bit of fun really. Might do another one here. Leave that a bit longer. So as we dress the hair in different areas, we're going to get these different lengths coming through. So now that we can, we're going to see in a technical perspective is when I pull this actually out on the vertical, the gold curve is stay still here. So we've got this layer and then this length that we cut over as it sits. So we see, this is what I mean about hair cutting, thinking about what things do when they fall. I'm always thinking about what they do when they fall. So up here, I'm not thinking about what it's doing up here, I'm thinking about as that falls, what's happening. So as that falls, then I've got this length of disconnection, that falls down there, that disconnection is falling over the top. So we've got this layer moving, so as this hair moves, it's giving this really cool little different elastic texture, which I really like. And I think I'm almost there, I'm just going to do the last couple little bits of the refining. I'm going to present to you the end and I'll show you, I'll do a little quick recap for you guys, okay? So please let me know what you're thinking. Tell me how you feel about the fringe, if it's something you're into, or if you prefer something more blunt. Uh, 1920. 1920s? Yeah. No, 19, 19 and 20. Oh no, that wasn't to you, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so that was to another question. <laughs> I'm really just, you know, focusing now on my visual. I've worked, you know, all the way through very technically, very technical in my in my structure and now I'm being really visual breaking it up so I'm just going to come through here and I just want to start to play around a little bit breaking up some of these lengths that we've got sitting over the top so as it moves you can see all these crazy different lengths going on but as it sits, everything blends really beautifully. So I'm just going to start to finish now. So I'm just going to use a little bit of spray. I'm going to kick the dunce head up so I can see it at eye level, which is really important. And then I'm going to, when I've styled it, I'm going to finish refining. Thank you all for taking your time to watch on a Friday night. Watch some hair, showing your passion. So 
really start moving it until I until I like it what I see. So really, what we have is we have a little kind of modern, quite flat little version of a, of a bulb, really, a little graduated bulb kind of thing. And you know, it's going around things in different ways, and that's how, for me personally, that's how I have fun. I start, you know, I start exploring different haircuts and doing them in different ways to make things more exciting. I can do, you know, I like doing, sometimes I do the same haircut three different ways. I remember when I was training um, and I was in my vase room, when I was getting towards the end of it, so I could really understand hair inside and out, my boss, my old boss used to, um, we used to let, we'll get a section here at the front, for example, and pull it out there and cut a bit and say, try with graduation or graduate bulb around graduation and start from there. And I'd have to like, take a little step from here, boom, and then work out the haircut from that. And that really helped me get a really good understanding of like really good knowledge of haircutting. So knowing haircutting inside and out is a massive thing for me. Um, Elliot Rowley says, Jimmy, wrap the t-shirt, black hearts all day. Black hearts all day, yeah. This is my, <laughs> my friend's, um, my friend's company, who do like old motorbikes, but really cool, which I'm sure I've won the raffle for, the raffle's at six, I'm sure I've won. <laughs> so I'll be finishing this, and a nice little gift will be my new bike, so I'm excited. <laughs> uh, Marta says, great training, beautiful hairstyle, thank you very much. Maria says, thank you very much, I love the look. Thank you so much, guys, thank you for your kind words. Just now coming around this last little bit, I just want to start to move it around and start to have a little play. Just start to get this sort of hell on it. Well, I like this now strength in the back with something a little bit softer in the front area, so something a bit more loose in the front. Like I said earlier, I love things that go strong, but then I need a bit of softness. So I guess this is kind of showing showing my taste and what I like. And I hope you guys like it too. Martin says, I will go see you in London. I love disconnecting haircuts. I love to do them and I love to see people do them. Amazing. We really look forward to having you, mate. Just give us a shout, give us a message. I'll get back to you straight away and we'll have a little chat. We'd love to have you in London. Hazel says, makes me excited about getting back to my clients. Oh, me too. I'm so excited too. Not see all of them, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> most of them I'm excited to see. I'm really just finishing touches here. You know, we want to be a bit anal. That extra two minutes can make all the difference, you know. Barbara says it was a great pleasure to be on this live. Thank you so much, Barbara. Thank you so much for being on it with me. And spending this time together. Little Friday night together. Fun. Right, guys, that's it. That's me done, I think. Oh, 
we could carry on forever with that, but I think I'm really happy with how that's come out. I think I've got the right amount for me of softness and strength. I'm happy with the, the length that's come out and the weight. I'll present to you now and just really quickly go through a recap of what we've done. Thank you so much for sharing true haircutting and not just another haircut. That's so kind, that means the world. <laughs> Thank you so much, that really does mean a lot to me. Okay, guys, that's it. That's me. So, thank you so much to all of you for watching. Thank you, Sebastian, for giving us this chance to share with you guys. Let's talk a little bit now about my girl, my girl here, all right? What I did, first of all, all I did was just section off in a really nice horseshoe from the recession area to just below the crown. I brought it up quite high because I knew I wanted to flatten this shape internally. If I brought it lower, I would have built more weight in the shape, which means I would have filled the head shape more. I wanted to flatten this out more. So I've had my section quite high, and I sectioned off a panel in the front, a rectangle panel, which followed the hairline, about an inch and a half thick. Okay, we started off in the back, as you can see, working, first of all, in a vertical manner. The reason we worked vertically is to flatten the shape, okay? We wanted a graduated shape, meaning shorter externally building into more length towards the top, but a flat version, so something that wasn't too full. I then carried on in diagonal sections, slightly pivoting round until I reached the point where the hairline came up. Okay, we did this on both sides. The reason I stopped at the point where the hairline starts to come up is because at that point, I started to disconnect the underneath. So I visually, removed the hair that I wanted to keep in the outline that kept enough weight, removed it each time. I worked from a graduated technique more into a layer as I worked through, still eliminating this hairline area, leaving the length all the way through to the front hairline. Okay, we did exactly the same on the other side, leaving this length through here, but building up a little bit of weight through here. To flatten this out more, I've then come over the top, elevated right up, and taken the length from the back and worked it down towards the front. So removed all that weight towards the front, flattening it out towards the front of the head. Okay, after that, I just blow dried and did a little bit of refining so you could start to see the idea that we were going for. We then worked on the fringe section because it's the shortest section, which means that if I'm gonna cut this hair, it's not gonna affect the front, okay? I worked in a vertical manner. Again, vertically, I'm more likely to slim. I want to lay the fringe down, so I worked vertically. We worked on the base, so following around the head shape, okay? And then just started to connect it into the hair that we had in the underneath. We then worked a much longer length towards this top for our horseshoe, working slightly longer towards the front to build more length so we could maintain the length through this front area. Then I just started to play around with blow dry and connecting in this fringe and playing around with these outlines. And what I wanted was something quite smooth and quite clean towards the back, with it being slightly more dishevelled and slightly looser towards this front. Okay? Guys, thank you so much for watching. My name is James Akers from Slate Hair Education. Thanks again, Sebastian. See you next time. Thank you. Finished? I press finish. Finish. <laughs>